I used to be a pro baseball player for the Red Sox. Rated the number 20th prospect in the world. I was a good player. I was, I was young, I was fast. I used to hit a 100 mile an hour fastball, but two days later, I couldn't tie my shoes. And in one night, it was all taken away from me. I'm Ryan Westmoreland, I'm 33 years old. I'm an assistant coach at UMass Dartmouth Baseball. I also run a developmental youth baseball organization. As far as I can remember back, I love baseball. I grew up in the Northeast. I was a huge Red Sox fan growing up, and I wanted to play at the highest level. It was my senior year of high school, and throughout the course of the year, I had you know, anywhere from one to 80 professional scouts at my game. And out of high school in 2008, I was drafted by the Boston Red Sox as an outfielder. Red Sox pitchers and catchers will be reporting to Fort Myers in five weeks. A lot of the players are already down in Florida, including Portsmouth's Ryan Westmoreland. Won't be long before Ryan is patrolling the outfield at Fenway. He kicked off his pro career last year in Lowell, hitting 296, slugging seven home runs and driving in 35. When Ryan heads down to Florida, he knows he'll be receiving a lot more attention, but he remains focused on improving and staying healthy and enjoying his first full spring training mixed in with the best players in the Red Sox organization. Developing news on top Red Sox prospect and Rhode Island native Ryan Westmoreland. Westmoreland left spring training earlier this month after a growth was found on his brain. We are monitoring this story. We'll bring you much more ahead in sports. So the first day that I, I noticed something was wrong, I was in Fort Myers at, at our spring training complex. I think I was doing lunges or, or some activity where I felt like my leg went numb in a sense, like, it, it, like your hand falls asleep. That's when I kind of went to the training staff and you know, I said, something's not right here. Something's going on, and we ended up getting an MRI, and that's when kind of everything started to spiral a little bit. I was still very unaware of exactly what was going on. I knew it was serious. I knew I needed you know, surgery on my brainstem, but I didn't really understand the severity of it. What I had was called the cavernous malformation. What it, what it is is essentially like a blood clot. Um, like a raspberry that leaks out blood, and that's what causes your symptoms. And really, the only way to get rid of it is, you know, surgery. There's no, you know, there's no cure, there's no medicine. The 22-year-old underwent his first brain surgery in 2010, and after a setback last summer, he is deciding not to return. He's still in the intensive care unit and will have what doctors call a difficult recovery ahead. I think the first step is to, for him, is to maybe take a step away. Uh, in the short term and, and um, you know, really figure out the path that makes sense for him uh, and we'll support him in doing that. You know, right away it was just a real sense of, of shock. You know, I used to be a pro baseball player for the Red Sox and all of a sudden, you know, I have to stop that and undergo this, this emergency. Right after surgery, I didn't watch baseball. I didn't watch the Red Sox, and I wouldn't watch highlights of games. And not because I didn't love the sport, because I always have and always will, but it was tough for me to, to be able to accept the fact that these guys are, are starting at Fenway Park and I'm laying in the hospital bed. I think, I think a lot of people forget too, though, that his story didn't end. 10 years ago, 12 years ago, his story continues on and he's, he's a person, he's a human being. So he still has things that he's working through. He still has things that are difficult for him, but he knows that he can persevere because he's seen the worst of the worst. Ryan's the best dad. He loves his girls so much. He just lights up when he sees them and they love being around him. Adeline and him are so cute together. Having kids with a husband who has disabilities is tough. When Adeline was first born, there was a lot that Ryan had to adjust to, and there was a lot that he couldn't really do. You know, giving her a bottle, changing her diaper, those things are hard to do when you can't feel the right half of your body. And so he finds a way. He always finds a way and always makes sure that he is involved because they're his world. When I signed out of high school, I basically said I wasn't going to college. So in the back of my mind, I, I said to myself, I'm, 
I'm gonna get my degree one day, whether it's when I'm 19, whether it's when I'm 40, I'm gonna do it. Northeastern has a great scholarship program with the Red Sox and MLB. And when I said I wanted to take classes, Dan Queen at Northeastern got in touch with me right away. So they really helped me navigate every aspect of college. And, and really, I can't say enough about Northeastern. So Northeastern University is the preferred education provider for Major League Baseball. We're the only institution in the country that has this special relationship with the commissioner's office in New York City. The goal of the partnership is simple, to help all players, no matter what level they are in the game, if they're still playing, if they're former players, we are here to help them every step of the way towards working towards their degree. So when I got to Northeastern, we had one player enrolled, and you know, more than five years later, now we're at nearly 130 players enrolled, and almost 35 players have graduated with their degree. Ryan is a, just an inspiration. His story resonates across all of baseball and really just across the world. I think his GPA is close to a 4.0. So the fact he's juggling that, his multiple surgeries, he just has a new baby, so he's a father of two, he coaches. He's just the most impressive human being I've come across. I think a thing that I've really took on as a coach is what are you going to do after baseball and how are you as a person because you're not going to be between the white lines all, all your life. So it was tough being on that field again and you know looking at all these kids with big dreams trying to achieve them but I think I was forced to mature and now when I'm on the field I love it. It's a lot. It's um, the juggle between everything I'm doing right now, school, being a father, being a coach. When I, you wreck it all down, it's all things that I love doing. I love being around baseball. I love obviously my kids and family. Looking back at my journey, I think a big thing I've learned is never take anything for granted. There's going to be good days and there's going to be bad days. And I have so much more to live for and to, to give back. And I'm not the kind of guy that's going to let, you know, a physical disability get in the way of that. It's just about facing that adversity head on and knowing that in the darkest of times, you're going to get through it and you're going to be okay. Please give a warm welcome home to Fenway Park, our dear friend, Ryan Westmoreland. Thank you, Ryan, for your courage and for inspiring us all.